Okay, so uh, welcome. So this is a presentation which is uh, joint work with Abdel Rahman Ali Tomer Ashur, Ali Ben Sasson, myself, Simon Doge, and Alan Shepianyets. And this is a presentation on the design of symmetric key primitives for advanced cryptographic protocols. So this work is focused on uh, these advanced cryptographic protocols like multi-party computation and zero knowledge uh, proofs and the use of uh, symmetric key primitives in them. And um, there is a big uh, focus here on what is efficient uh, for these protocols. What kind of building blocks do we need uh, in our symmetric key primitives, which are, which are easy to evaluate for these protocols. And given those basic building blocks, that means S boxes, which are efficient and, and the use of linear layers, uh, we found that there uh, the effect of this causes quite a shift in crypt analysis. We shift from the crypt analysis that we know and love, like differential and linear crypt analysis, to a more uh, to more of a focus on uh, Grubner-based analysis and algebraic uh, crypt analysis with um, bigger extension fields. Uh, and the result of our study uh, ends in the creation of two primitives, which we named uh, Vision and Rescue, which in this presentation I will uh, present to you. And we'll start by explaining what uh, these advanced cryptographic protocols are. And we're going to give two examples. We're going to give the example of zero knowledge proofs and of uh, multi party computation. So, in zero knowledge proofs, typically we have two parties we have a prover and we have a verifier. And the prover has some, let's say, some information. And to put the link with symmetric key primitives, let's say that the prover has some pre-image and wants to show to the verifier via interaction with the verifier knowledge of this pre-image without revealing what this pre-image is. Then another application is multi-party computation. So in multi-party computation, we typically consider two or more parties. Each party can have their uh, own secret information or can have their information shared and interacts with each other in order to compute on this secret data. And the applications of uh, multi-party computation are plenty, but uh, one possible application is to calculate a thresholdized uh, signature. And of course, for these threshold signature schemes, we also need symmetric key primitives in the form of a hash function to make sure um, we sign shorter messages. So, okay, uh, to explain to you uh, the rest of this presentation, it will be very interesting to quickly go over um, what I mean when I say multivariate equations, uh, because these will be used for both uh, Starks uh, as for uh, Grobner based analysis. So um, we're going to take this, this very simple example. So this is a, a typical uh, cipher, just a, uncubing, so this is a compositional inverse of the cubing uh, map, uh, the input, adding a key, uh, cubing that, and then adding another key. So we can express this, um, this simple function in many ways. We can say, well, okay, let's say um, si is our input, so we can say, well, we take si, we raise that to power 1 over 3, we add uh, this, this key in, we cube that, we uh, add this other key in, and that I'm going to call SI plus 2. So this is the simple forward evaluation. The backward evaluation then, of course, uh, is also quite uh, simple. We can say, well, okay, um, I don't know where we're working on. Let's say over a uh, prime field. So then there is a minus. So we subtract our key. We do the compositional inverse of our cubing. We uh, subtract our key uh, once again. And then we cube that, and then we find SI. So this is the backwards evaluation. And we see that in both the backwards as the forward evaluation, we have this uncubing map here. So we'll see that that will be of high degree. But we can express this uh, also as a multivariate uh, equation. And in a multivariate equation, we can say, well, OK, let's call this x. And then we can say, well, let's write this in two equations. And in two equations, we can find, well, let's do x. Let's do minus k uh, i plus 1. Let's cube that and let's call that as i. I would also, uh, let's say, let's cube x. Let's add uh, k i plus 2 with it. And then we get si plus 2. And so we see this is a multivariate 
uh, equation because uh, each equation is in, in, in multiple variables and each equation is also of low degree. So now we move on to our work. Uh, we're going to first compare the traditional model with our new model. So in the traditional model, this is the model we're used to, we're making symmetric key primitives over software or hardware. And these, we know these work invariably over bits. So depending on your platform architecture, they might work over uh, bytes or 32 bits. So over small uh, extension fields, uh, but these, are, these extension fields would still be small. And as a result, our S boxes are also uh, quite small because the S boxes are going to be the, the tougher uh, operation to handle. And uh, it is better if our S boxes uh, respect the platform's architecture. Then on the linear layers, we know we want these to be light as well. And that means light in XOR costs. So we want to have good diffusion, but for the minimal number of XOR costs uh, that we can have. Compare this, this traditional model, to the new model. In the new model, we're working with algebraic expressions. We want all of our operations to have some sort of simple algebraic expression, not over the base field, not over bits, but over a, an extension field. Uh, and like that finite field is one that is either a prime field with a large prime number, let's say a 32-bit prime number at least, or we're working again with a binary extension field, but now that binary extension field can be quite large. So let's say 64 bits or something. Now what we see is we're working with uh, larger S boxes. Not just larger S boxes, these, these S boxes can then have uh, simple algebraic expressions such as monomials, let's say uh, the cubing function or the inversion function, but then over a large prime field or a large uh, binary extension field. Our linear layers, typically, they can be heavy because it, when we express them as these multivariate equations, they still are just equations of degree one. That means that even though these linear layers might be heavy in XOR costs, they are still of degree one and therefore very uh, efficient uh, to compute. And so we see that there is a huge difference between these two models. We go from small S boxes to using large X S boxes while retaining efficiency, and we can use heavier linear layers. All right, and that that is a difference in design uh, goals, and that will also, uh, as said later on, create a huge difference in cryptanalysis as well. So this is how my colleague Tomer Ashur and I started on the development of the block cipher Jarvis. We were contacted by this company Starkware to uh, investigate um, block ciphers and general primitives which were efficient for their algorithmic design. And what we found was AES, the AES block cipher was quite efficient simply because its S boxes were quite large working over bytes. And we saw that by increasing the size of the S box, we could gain a more efficient uh, cipher. So we went for the more extreme option by taking the uh, inversion over the entire state and also taking an affine polynomial over the entire state, uh, releasing the need for uh, any diffusion layers. And while the inversion was really efficient for these Starks, the affine polynomial was the inefficient part. So in order to increase efficiency again, we split up this affine polynomial in two parts, uh, B inverse and C, such that B and C are both of low degree. And what the protocol then basically does is it evaluates each of these blocks separately and each of these blocks is multivariately of low degree. So Jarvis was quite efficient uh, over these Starks. And the reason was because it uh, was very easy to express as multivariate uh, equations. And it was that same expression that can be used to attack it via a Grobner-based attack. And the idea is as follows. So the inversion normally is an operation which is of high degree um, over any field that it is uh, worked over. But multivariately, you can simply express it as saying, well, just do x times y, the input times the output, and that should equal to one. And that is simply a quadratic a multivariate equation. 
So that's simply a quadratic equation, in other words. And using Grubner basis, you can um, split the affine polynomials again in two parts, a B part and a C part, both being uh, of low degree. So because Jarvis was attacked and we basically saw that Grubner based attacks were, were indeed a threat, which was quite new to us because typically they don't form a threat to, to many symmetric primitives. So we started to rethink our design and to see, well, how do we actually take into account um, this new design area? So, and this led to the design of vision. Now, uh, vision is quite like Jarvis, so it also uses the inversion as a nonlinear layer. It also uses affine polynomials, but now we use B and B inverse interchangeably. And B is again uh, of low degree. We also use more than one cell in the states, and we use an, uh, a diffusion layer, which is an MDS matrix. And the reason why this changed is twofold. The first, of, uh, the first reason is because uh, of efficiency. We saw that there were not many applications out there which use a prime field or a binary extension field the size of the entire state. Typically, it's much smaller. And secondly, uh, we also included in our crypt analysis a, a Grobner based analysis. And we saw that when using just one cell, um, the degree of regularity of that Grobner base did not rise. So uh, we, for better security arguments, we had to use more than one cell. So Jarvis and Vision, they both worked over binary extension fields. Okay, that was good, but we saw that many applications actually need to work over prime fields instead. So what we did is we redesigned our um, idea that we, or our design principles that we used in Vision, and we made um, a cipher called Rescue. So Rescue exists of, um, again, a nonlinear layer, being a monomial, x to the power alpha. But here we interchangeably use x to the power alpha and its compositional inverse, x to the power one over alpha. And again, we use a, a kind of shark-like structure. Okay, and so that, that brings us to our core design principles. So with these core design principles, we want to show to you uh, some interesting uh, observations we had when designing uh, Vision and Rescue. First of all, as opposed to software and hardware implementations, we needed quite a flexibility of state size and finite fields. And for example, we have the AES, which exists there for 128-bit security and 256-bit security. Something uh, restrictive as that we could not really make, uh, meaning that we found that many users, um, they use all different prime fields to work over. So we could not make a design that works over a particular prime field because then no one would be able to use that particular design. So we want our design to be um, kind of independent of the chosen prime field. The same uh, uh, happens with the uh, binary extension field case. This N here can be eight bits long. It could also be 32 bits long, it could even be 64 bits long. We should allow for any of these uh, parameters. In the state size and uh, rounds, we also found something that there are people that prefer a thin state, let's say a 128-bit state, but then let's say 20 rounds, a longer, uh, a larger number of rounds, versus a bigger state, let's say 512 bits, uh, but then needing only 10 rounds. So we still need the flexibility to allow users to say, well, I want to work with a bigger state with fewer rounds rather than a smaller state with more rounds. Um, a second design principle we had is um, non-procedural computation. This is basically what you have seen in Rescue and Vision, is we need our nonlinear layers or a round function to be of high polynomial degree. So our inversion or uh, our x to the power alpha or x to the power one over alpha uh, operations are of high degree when evaluated forward or backward, but they need to be of low multivariate degree. And so what that kind of means is that if you have a round, let's say you have an input in that round and you get an output, that we want there to be some function g such that if it operates on the input and the output, it is of uh, low degree. 
And that might sound a bit weird, but the idea is that many of these advanced cryptographic protocols, even though sometimes, so in zero knowledge proofs, Y is already computed and you're just wanting to verify whether indeed Y is the output of X after uh, applying the round function, even in uh, protocols such as multi-party computation, there are tricks to um, kind of uh, implicitly evaluate this uh, multivariate equation anyway. And so we saw earlier that um, from this change of models, from the software hardware model to this new model, we can use larger S boxes, we can um, use heavier linear layers. And because of that change, we also see a change in cryptanalysis. So we found that the traditional cryptanalysis being like differential and linear cryptanalysis, um, we found it quite easy to, to provide resistance against these attacks because of using larger nonlinear layers, because of using, um, let's say, a shark structure, so full MDS diffusion, uh, but also using monomials as our uh, nonlinear layers for which we know the differential and linear properties. So we found it really easy to provide resistance against these attacks. What was really difficult to provide resistance against was uh, against interpolation and Grubner attacks. And when I say to provide resistance against them, I mean without harming efficiency. So we can easily provide resistance against these attacks without harming efficiency, whereas these attacks, they quite inherently state difficult. Uh, and the reason is, of course, because we are forced to, cre uh, to create uh, nonlinear layers of low algebraic degree, even being of low multivariate algebraic degree. Um, and we want our round functions to be simple expressions over the extension field rather than over base fields, so over bits, for example, we want them to be simple expressions over the extension fields. And these attacks, especially Grobner attacks, they work over those representations. So they remained our main focus of cryptanalysis in this work. And so on the cryptanalysis using Grubner basis, we'll give an example. And so in the example, I've um, plotted or given the graph of rescue with m equal to two, that means two state cells, and alpha equal to three, meaning that the cubing function was used as the nonlinear layer. In the blue curve, what we see is Let's say that these round functions that we use, these multivariate equations, they acted as if a regular system. In that case, we see in the number of rounds, the degree of regularity going up following the blue curve. But what we did was we also uh, took our um, round functions from rescue, we implemented those and we calculated a Grobner basis for them. And we see that this gives us our data points for rounds two, three, and four. We see that these um, give a degree of regularity way fewer uh, or way lower than that of a regular system. And what we see is that well, this this degree of regularity, this this uh, concrete degree of regularity, is half the degree of regularity of a regular system. So what we do is we plot the orange curve. This is um, a concrete fit of our data points, and from that curve we can estimate the complexity uh, over, or we extrapolate the complexity over multiple rounds. How much uh, effort it would take to compute a Grobner basis for more rounds of rescue. So uh, we've put our work already uh, online some time before. And in the meantime, it has enjoyed uh, quite a lot of practical use. I've, in this slide, I've linked some um, links to uh, GitHub, but there are also papers on ePrint or uh, submitted papers um, that you can find out there where uh, mainly Rescue has already seen uh, practical use. Uh, and with this, I, I kind of want to state that um, although the field uh, of arithmetization oriented ciphers is quite new, LOMC and MIMC being, uh, I think, the first ones, um, it is gaining more and more traction. So there is uh, a lot of use and a lot of demand out there. And so that's that's a bit uh, opposed to the cryptanalysis. Um, so most of these primitives, they are quite new. We've, we've uh, been seeing uh, lately more and more works on uh, attacks against these uh, algebraic uh, primitives, against MIMC, for example, or um, against GMIMC. Um, and also in, in, this slide, uh, in this slide, I've um, listed already some cryptanalysis that has been done on vision and rescue 
uh, already, being the first two bullets. But this is also a call for, for more cryptanalysis. Uh, as I said, the field is getting more traction. And uh, for that to be sure that these new primitives are, are secure or by uh, optimizing their uh, efficiency further, more cryptanalysis is definitely wanted. So for those interested, the third bullet point uh, states a link to a challenge in uh, hosted by Starkware, uh, in which you can uh, find some instances of uh, the vision and rescue hash functions, as well as some other competitors. And uh, there you need to find collisions of these uh, instances and you will be rewarded some uh, uh, some ethers. Um, also, the last bullet point might be of interest. This is a new ePrint report, uh, which is also in submission. Uh, this is a uh, systematization of knowledge paper uh, in which we specify a uh, standard specification for rescue, um, mainly oriented for the implementer side of the community, but definitely if you want to uh, look at what are practical instances for you to crypt analyze, then this paper could be quite interesting. Uh, to search for as well. And with this, I want to um, end the presentation. Thank you all for uh, your attention. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a very, very nice FSE.